SpaceX Dragon, were go for launch. For the first time in history, NASA astronauts have launched from America in a commercial spacecraft to the International Space Station. It's been nine years since we've launched American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. This is the first Falcon 9 to carry humans to orbit. What a great day for the United States of America. And now, after more than two months aboard the International Space Station, please confirm your visors are down and that you are ready for undock and departure. The crew safely returned to Earth in another historic first. We're looking at dragons streaking across the sky on its re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere. Since the space shuttle was retired, nearly a decade ago, it's been a race among several aerospace companies to be chosen as NASA's solution. To carry humans and cargo to space. Boeing and SpaceX have emerged as the key suppliers. And now Elon Musk's SpaceX has made history with its revolutionary Crew Dragon spaceship. I've been 18 years working towards this goal, so it's hard to believe that it's happened. On May 30th, a Falcon 9 rocket with a dragon on top lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center from the same launch pad that sent the Apollo astronauts to the moon 50 years ago. Without a space shuttle alternative, the United States had been dependent upon Russia to keep an American presence on the International Space Station. For the last nine years, we have been purchasing rides on Russian Soyuz rockets, and those costs have gone up significantly. Costs of nearly $4 billion. The International Space Station is a critical capability for the United States of America. Having access to it is also critical. There's a lot of significance to bringing these missions back to American soil. First is an alternative to the Soyuz solution that's out there. It's remarkable to think that the last time that a crewed launch vehicle departed from the United States was 2011. And the mission demonstrates a remarkable role reversal for how America goes to space. This time when we do it, we're doing it differently than we've ever done it before. NASA is not going to purchase, own, and operate the hardware. In fact, we're going to be a customer. With both Dragon and Starliner programs in the works, NASA has redundancy. Something they depend on in all aspects of spaceflight. Once this test mission is complete, Dragon will be cleared to fly official crewed missions, and Starliner will continue development of their program. SpaceX has been hauling cargo on Dragon to ISS since 2012. We've flown Dragon to and from the space station successfully, 20 times for cargo missions. They successfully completed the first test run of the all-new Crew Dragon to the ISS in 2019. Last year, we had our Demonstration 1 mission, which was the Crew Dragon without a crew on board. We went to the space station, they opened up the hatch, and then came back home. A spacecraft docked autonomously without help from the mothership. This new mission, known as NASA's SpaceX Demo-2, is the final major test to certify SpaceX's revolutionary crew transportation system for long-duration missions to ISS. Most importantly, that Dragon can safely transport passengers. This historic flight used a brand new spacecraft, like some notable predecessors. The rocket that will take Crew Dragon to space is one of the most critical pieces of the mission. The Space Shuttle debuted in 1981 as the world's first reusable spacecraft. It launched strapped to two rocket boosters and glided back to Earth. The 23-story tall SpaceX original delivers nearly 2 million pounds of thrust. The profile is somewhat different for Dragon than it is for Shuttle. The most complex engineering tests ever done. We actually put Dragon on top of Falcon, launch the Falcon, and then initiate the launch escape system. We demonstrated that Dragon is capable of carrying the crew away from Falcon in the event of an emergency. Extensive testing and test flights covering every aspect of this mission have been going on for years. I think we have pounded the issues associated with Falcon and Dragon more than any other mission we've had in our history. We have been to the International Space Station 21 times. This race for space will open a new chapter for the U.S but requires great risk and has not been without its serious challenges. Boeing Starliner narrowly avoided a disaster during a 2019 unmanned flight test. The spacecraft failed to reach the space station due to a software glitch, but returned successfully to Earth. And while SpaceX has completed a major milestone, it's come at a big price, overcoming many hurdles. Then 18 years working towards this goal, when starting SpaceX we maybe had a 10% chance of reaching orbit. It took us four attempts just to get to orbit with Falcon 1. In the last two years, 
Falcon and Dragon have experienced several test failures, but all the learning has brought them to this point. We should not lose sight of the fact that this is a test flight, that we're taking it very, very seriously from a safety perspective. While the space shuttle was hardware heavy, Dragon is light and sleek. The two big differences really are the shuttle was a hauling truck. It could take a big payload into orbit. With crews for the space shuttle, we were doing it with some really old hardware. The Dragon is a smaller capsule, so a smaller crew, not a lot of cargo. It'll also look a lot more modern on the inside. Now all that capability is really incorporated on board the vehicle and internalized so that it does make for a nice clean cockpit. One of the biggest differences that you see, of course, is that from a traditional cockpit designed many decades ago, where you have many switches and knobs and dialed inside of Dragon, you have these large touch screens. Crew Dragon is a 21st century spacecraft, and we wanted to not only be as safe and reliable as you'd expect from the most advanced spacecraft in the world, but we also wanted to look amazing and look beautiful. A new spacecraft in spaceflight should be inspired. It can carry the crew safely to the station and bring them home without direct intervention, but of course we want to make sure we give the crew all the tools possible in case they need to manually pilot Dragon's flight. While this mission marks a new era in human spaceflight, the two astronauts on board are veterans. The Dragon mission is all about technology breakthroughs right down to the astronauts' space suits. Both Dragon and the Falcon 9 rocket it travels on are designed to be reused. Dragon has been designed for reuse and reflight up to five times, somewhere to our Falcon vehicles. Not only do we refly Falcon for many missions, but we also refly of Dragons already. SpaceX believes a reusable spaceflight system is the pivotal breakthrough needed to reduce the cost of space access. The crew spent a day in Earth orbit, flying Dragon manually to test their control capability and preparing for their historic docking with the ISS. They took it off automatic and just manually flying the craft around. It's going to be pretty fun. Dragon performed a flawless precision docking with the station autonomously. Demo 2 mission had been historic in a very different way. With an ongoing global pandemic, NASA had asked that no spectators attend the launch. We are asking people to watch from home. We want to keep everybody safe. And so we're asking people not to travel to the Kennedy Space Center. That makes me sad to even say it. But we need Demo 2 to be successful. And the best way we can do that is to do it while keeping everybody safe. This successful NASA SpaceX public-private partnership is the key many believe opens the door to Moon and Mars exploration. Today we're flying into lower orbit and in a few short years we want to be flying to the Moon. We're going to the Moon sustainably. We're going to learn how to live and work on another world for long periods of time. We're going to use the resources of the Moon in order to live and work and we're going to take all of that knowledge onto Mars. This is hopefully the first step on a journey towards civilization on Mars life-equipping, multi-planetary, based on the moon expanding beyond Earth. However, these variants reveal several setbacks that have even led to some gruesome accidents in the past. SpaceX, fully aware, ditched the idea of applying traditional variants on its Dragon capsule and instead developed a new system that is more optimized and cost-efficient. The Dragon capsule is designed and developed by SpaceX starting in late 2004 which allows for the transport of people as well as environmentally sensitive cargo to the International Space Station and other low-Earth orbit destinations. For that reason, it plays a vital role in Elon Musk's ambition of making the human race a multi-planetary species, given that it serves the commercial contracts between SpaceX and its customers and those contracts' profit will pay for the bills, especially when it comes to Starship's developmental project. And there's nothing trivial about the Dragon capsule. As of June 7 of 2023, SpaceX successfully launched 38 missions to the islands for its capsule, testing the 37 such flights that NASA's space shuttle orbiters racked up, SpaceX noted on Twitter or X.com, and the great experiences with Crew Dragon might be something that astronauts will never forget. According to NASA astronaut and pilot Megan MacArthur, who traveled to the ISS on SpaceX's spacecraft during the Crew-2 mission, the ride was really smooth. It is used in the event of a critical emergency to quickly separate the capsule from its launch vehicle in case of an emergency requiring the abort of the launch, such as an impending explosion. This configuration with a tower pulls the capsule free since the motors are in front of the vehicle. Afterward, 
the system will be jettisoned before the time the spacecraft deployed parachutes to land. The crew is seated in seats that eject themselves or ejection seats as used in military aircraft. Each crew member returns to Earth with an individual parachute. Each systems are effective only in a limited range of altitudes and speeds. Then once the crew dragon is at a safe distance, the capsule can deploy its four main parachutes and lower itself gently into the Atlantic Ocean. A recovery vessel would then meet up with the capsule and rescue the crew inside. Both companies would produce the spacecraft sending NASA's astronauts to the International Space Station, under the commercial crew program to replace the Soyuz flights. Afterward, those three main parachutes continued to fail in the test of 2023, and this time, Starliner's next test was cancelled indefinitely. Meanwhile, the Dragon capsule has completed six crew missions excellently, sending NASA's astronauts safely to the ISS. As a result, NASA bought more flights from SpaceX in 2021 and 2022, respectively. It's considered a massive milestone in NASA's attempts to escape the Russian spacecraft's influence. As you know, the USA, namely NASA, won in the race to the moon in the 20th century over Russia. But afterward, its spaceflight had to rely mostly on Russian technology, particularly after the retirement of the space shuttle in 2011. If NASA did not have any vehicle for itself, it would have to rely on the Soyuz program to send its astronauts to the ISS for a long time. So the commercial crew development program played a crucial role in this situation. Second, is their desire for self-sufficiency. It'd be better to manufacture something for yourself instead of importing from others. This way, you can save a lot of money and be independent in all of your work. Which amazingly is the idea that gave birth to Elon Musk's SpaceX. Last but definitely not least, it's safe to say that when compared to thrusters integrated into the Dragon's capsule, Soyuz's rescue system reveals some drawbacks. As said, the Soyuz spacecraft used an escape tower powered by a solid rocket motor to pull the capsule from the vehicle, all of which are expendable. In contrast, Dragon's capsule can be reused up to 15 times. So its cost per launch is likely to be much cheaper than that of Soyuz. More than likely actually. It's definitely cheaper. Therefore, by integrating the abort system into the vehicle, it simplifies the sequence of events needed for mission success. Additionally, the Dragon 2 uses hypergolic rocket engines, or liquid-fueled rocket engines, running a similar system to what's used in reaction control systems, which offer very quick and reliable ignition. However, it doesn't mean that Crew Dragon's rescue system is perfect. Since it's integrated into the capsule and not ejected at the end of the launch, that causes added mass, so it can only ferry crew and cargo to and from the ISS and does not have the capability of going off to deep space destinations, like the moon and beyond, which is entailed in NASA's Artemis program. But within the commercial crew program's framework of reaching the ISS and only the ISS, SpaceX's Dragon capsule has demonstrated its efficiency in what it is designed to do and done even better in both Starliner and Soyuz. We're going to think about where it's actually complete with our fly-around that will be coming out underneath here. When STS-135 crew departed the ISS on the last shuttle flight in 2011, they left a flag for the next American mission to retrieve. This flag represents not just a symbol of our national pride and honor, but in this particular case it represents a goal. This flag also will be flown prominently here by the forward hatch of No-2 to be returned to Earth once again by an astronaut that launches on a U.S. vehicle, hopefully in just a few years. And now the Dragon and its crew have captured the flag and made history. Yeah, so this is the flag that we left here almost nine years ago and after the end of the shuttle program we decided we would have a little friendly competition to see who came up and got this flag and congratulations SpaceX, you got the flag. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.